looks like this might be the necromancer the background art during the loading screen um, not not a huge not a great draw but I can show a force and I can smack let me see they're just gonna move yeah they're all moving around no damage is being dealt this turn so I really want to try to get as much offense done as possible before they they start taking their offensive turns Press the attack, penitence, and strike. So I think I'm actually just going to go, like as mentioned, just full offense. Excuse me one moment. My dog's barking a little bit. I'm just going to go make sure everything's okay and console him. Alrighty, so sorry about that. The uh, mailman came by. You know how dogs are barking at mailmen, but he, he settled down again. So I apologize for the second delay there. And no need to defend or mend or anything. So I was hoping for a little bit more of the magic missiles. But so this is the, the combo. I could channel. I could spend a strategy point to generate channel and then spend my channel to generate more um, ability power if I had a need for it. No need this turn, though. Oh, I need to shift up so my magic missiles can actually hit him. I don't know why it appears like it's X is showing me, and then it's showing everywhere, it looks like. Maybe I'm misinterpreting this, so I don't know why I couldn't quite reach him. I'm really sorry about the that that noise. There's, like, a, a very loud plane going by. Uh, it's a little concerning. I, I don't know what it is. It's happening again. Um... I hope everything's okay. I'm gonna play my deflect in the turn. Okay, and it looks like they're gonna be doing a little bit more damage this turn, so I might wanna use a little bit of my cards to defend. I do have intervention though, so this this ranged attack, I'm hoping he will block. Um, he will move in the way of. So for now, I'm just gonna play my blocks. And I'll play uh, back kick just because it's free and it generates just a touch of um, vulnerability. Oh, but it didn't generate it because he was he was, he had guard up. I keep I keep forgetting that mechanic. Okay, that's still a fine turn. Um, my assumption is that he will block the ranged attack. Catherine here. I think I'll be able to take care of this guy, this skeleton up front here with Catherine. Yeah, just just barely able to take care of it, but I think I am. And can't quite play my heal, but I can gen I can give him the region. Oh no, he's too far away. Can't quite give him the region either, so I'll just play a deflect and the restore is useless, but I suppose did the restore? I, I thought the free cards, the the temporary heal cards, wouldn't generate um, strategy points, but I think that generated just enough for me to move back. So now we both have some channel, and he'll heal up. That's great. And then just uh, pretty much the same turn I'll have every time Pierre comes around. I'm just gonna hope to have as many magic missiles as possible, and I'll swap places. I'll have them swap places. He got the vulnerable. But he had guard, so I don't know exactly when vulnerable gets applied uh, through guard and when it doesn't. Um, I'll get used to it, though. Little little screen lag there. Sorry about that. It shouldn't be too big of a deal, though. It's just a frame or two. Oh, and this looks great. I feel like I drew, like, a lot of cards as well. Like, this is a very full hand. I don't necessarily know why. This looks like a good hand, though. 
So I'm going to maybe shift. I should be able to generate back enough strategy points to still play sustaining uh, strike this turn. That's my hope. So I will... I'll show a force after I rend. I don't think I'm going to rend at all, actually, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to play two dodges instead. And then now I can sustaining strike. And it looks like can't quite get a kill anywhere. Oh, this is maybe the neck the necromancer i don't know maybe he's still coming in that looks like a necromancer to me everyone else has been a skeleton so seems like a safe bet and then yeah so now i'll, I'll get my my big triggers off if i can uh wiggle catherine up next turn and i, I might be able to file mend no big deal but now that i yeah so i was i was looking right at it it looks like i got a tiny amount of uh of strategy points for playing the free card so i should do that every time because it, it just gets deleted as far as i know nothing to purge no region needed i'll just play i'd rather play the attack then i suppose i can hit this oh it was for no damage though either one was a little useless Barrier. So who are you going to hit? What are you doing? Apply five shock, chains three, so my whole team will have the shock applied to it. Eight damage, and this character is walking. So I think shock is probably like like a, a form of on, oh, on turn start, trigger stored shock, damage on self, and all shocked enemies. Okay. So so by all five of, or by all three of my party members having shock, I think they'll each trigger it on each other. Like it'll be a total of 15 damage to each person. That seems like a lot. That seems really powerful. Um, maybe I'm misinterpreting it. I will play this because it's free. Magic missile and my other attacks and then just quick barrier. I suppose I should push him back one. So we'll see how the, the shock works now. And I really, I, I don't know what that, that background noise is. Uh, so, I'm so sorry if it's just, uh, being picked up on the mic. It, it's like a plane or something, but it keeps going back and forth. It's, I'll, I'll try to ignore it for now. Um, I'm gonna move him forward just so he's a little bit more in range, possibly in range at least, not sure what what I'll have on Catherine and Pierre. And then he's gonna take the shock again here and he's moving, he's attacking. So he's gonna take a little damage, but it looks like not that much. So two guards should be fine. And then I'll pommel strike, I'll attack the enemy I've been um, trying to damage, that's already damaged. Yeah, I think I think he took the damage from her shock just now, and he still has it. So it you lose the shock upon it triggering on your turn, but it still hits everyone else who hasn't had it trigger yet. I'm gonna put a pause while that noise is going. I'm so. Okay, it's quieted down again. Um, again, I, I, I've i never heard that before. Uh, it's usually a bit quieter, so I'm really sorry if that's bothering anybody. I'm sure at this point, me messing with the volumes just is annoying, so I, I apologize about that too. I need to, I'll try to just ignore it and move on. And press the attack. Um, really good just for the, uh, the fact that it generates more press the attacks, which is what I was hoping for. And I can take him out or hit him pretty good. Oh wow, actually this, that's because of the vulnerable. Um, I'll just take out this enemy. I don't want him getting his turn of attacks off. And then chain mend. And restore. Actually useful because she was pretty low on health. And then this will generate the channel and I need the restore. And then this actually, I don't, I no longer need the restore because she healed so much that turn. Oh and cool. So flash should be free if I, if I had use for it. None yet, but I'm, I'm happy to see that that's how that works. I do like this card. This seems really cool trading a channel for a flash or excuse me training a channel for an ability power seems neat move him back and yeah i don't i don't think i need to do anything else don't need to spend my strategy points and then 
show of, show of force always good. Well, if I had any attacks, it would be. Um, so I'll shift back just to get the triggers to happen, um, and then I will just block, block. And he still has this intervention, which has just been sitting in his hand the whole time. So uh, as soon as if they ever land an attack anywhere else, it'll, it'll, he should take over, take the damage instead. And then so there's one channel here, so I'll be able to, if I do this attack, I will get the, uh, the heal card. But if I kill this character, it might just remove the skeleton even. I'll just accept that. Mm, no skeleton's still here. Um, File Mend will give me a little bit of HP back, and then I will strike. And that was the big the triggers I was hoping for. And then that's it for my turn here. Ooh, yeah, the shock doing a number on Pierre. I'm just going to arcane push. Just pushing him up so everyone can attack. Um, and he should still be attacking Catherine. Quick barrier just for the uh, strategy points. Oh, and he's down to two. Almost took him out. Almost had him. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put just a quick pause on this. My dog's barking at the noise. And I'm a little concerned why it's going, going off like that as well. So I'm so sorry about all these pauses. I will be right back. Okay, it seems to be quiet now. The, the noise seems to have vanished. My dog has settled down, but I'm, I'm really unsure about what's, what's causing it. So I got Carrion Thirst here. Grants Flame Pillar. Creates Burning Ground on two random cells. So burning, down, I, burning Ground, I assume, just burns enemies that stand on it. And the Burning Ground will last for three rounds. So that seems fine, but I, I'd rather have his Magic Missile Wand, I think. So I don't think I'll use this on anybody. 2 HP on a minion kill, chill, chill stacks you apply or increase by 4. It seems like a good wand, but just not exactly good for me. To the wounded and get men to seal the breach. Yes, sir. Good work putting down the necromancer. I'll, I'll mobilize some scouts to hunt down the rift lord, but first let's head back to the garrison and process all of this. Okay, so this... I was thinking about this as well. When I first started the, the game, it said the campaign was like 15 to 30 hours long. But did that mean for Act 1? Or am I approaching possibly the end of Act 1? Oh, and there was like a... Oh, it's because I teleported back. Okay, it was there was a weird symbol there. Let's see what Captain Roderick has to say. Got a little renowned. Securing the breach is a certain cause for celebration, but as we speak, the Rift Lord roams these lands. As long as he's alive, there's a good chance we are still under a silent threat that grows every day. Leave the defense and rebuilding of Silverkeep to my remaining men. You're well-traveled, and you have the best chance of hunting down the Rift Lord's trail. Traveling in the wilderness can be tough, so you're going to want supplies. I've given the order to Dana to stock you up. You'll find her at the inn. So I already have max supplies. Maybe this will increase my total max up from like 35 or 40 or something uh, um, we've met before if you're heading out of the wilderness you'll need to ensure you have ample supplies hunger's no good if you have it hunger's no good if you have to get into a fight I've prepared as much as I've prepared as much as you can carry anything beyond that is on your own dime we've got mouth this mouths to feed here too safe travels to you okay so it's just supplies if I didn't have them um, they yes. gave them to me for free with the defeats of the cultists, it seems we've re regained control of our waypoints. Oh, so I might be able to like teleport around the map a little bit more now. I've prepared a little something for you in the, si in the case the situation calls for it. These are portal scrolls. Okay, cool, cool. With this, you'll be able to create a portal that connects you back to the garrison's waypoint. Save it for emergencies. So it's fast travel. I'll try to describe more of these, but ma the material components are difficult to obtain and it will be pricey. Okay. At any rate, let's head over to the fort and let's over to the fort to talk with the captain when you're ready. I have some information to share. Okay, so I only get one. When used on your current note, a portal will be, a portal to the last town. So there's other towns. I assumed the garrison was the only town. 
uh, will be vi the last town you visited will be created. And then in realm mode, the um, the roguelite mode that's shorter. It's not the long campaign. You just kind of a more bite-sized uh, gameplay experience. Teleports you to any node in the next tier. So here it's like a teleport back in the roguelite mode. It appears to be like a, a skip forward in the progress. So that's fine. And then we'll go back to Roderick. Uh. Wine, good to see you. Hello. Captain, I've been piecing piecing together the information that we have so far based off the encounter at the library and the battle at the breach. From what I gather, the Rift Ward is intent on completing a complex Venai ritual that would bring that would bridge our existence with that of the spirit world or the realm of the dead. Okay. To achieve this, the ritual requires the three things: blood sacrifice, souls, and a location with certain topographical features. Topological topo, topological features, sorry. I suspect the cultists that are following him are providing the blood sacrifices. The last two I can hazard a guess. There are natural ley lines of energies that run deep into the earth. No doubt their energies have waned since the time of the Vanai and their departure, but they still are active regardless. These ley lines connect and merge all over the lands, and here in Westmire there is one known location, historically. The old burial grounds where the ancients where the ancient kings were buried. I don't, I don't think, yeah, this is where the Ancients Kings, I don't think that's quite right. That might be a typo where it's just where the Ancient Kings, or I could be, this could be a title like the Ancients Kings. I don't know. I think it's wrong. An educated guess, which I concur with. If you are to find the Rift Lord, that would be a good place to start looking in. Heading out and securing Burial Grounds, the Burial Grounds Waypoint would be a good first step. We'll be ready to keep you stocked up when re you return. Okay, so this is probably going to be the huh? the next circle that I go through. The map has gone out circle by circle so far. Keep a watch on your supplies. You don't want to starve out there. So I might be using supplies just for walking tile to tile, not just camping, because I think at some point I was down to like four, and I don't I don't remember using them. So you can stock up or find opportunity to get some out there. There used to be an overlook that served as a good camping spot a few miles before the waypoint, if memory serves me right. Okay, yeah, so it's up here. I might have uh, had this same branch pop off um, just right now as opposed to earlier. So I've already taken care of some of this, I guess. So I'll just head right up. And this is like a an auto campsite before this fight begins or this, this section of the campaign. Okay, I don't think I've camped with Pierre here. I've camped with uh, these two folks before. Yeah, I think I've I think I've camped with them. I don't know if they had. Like, I don't remember fervent prayer. Um, this this seems really good. Oh, it cost a fate though. In two hours, I'll still I'll use it still. That's that seems fine. I'm glad I I gave alms to the uh, the church so I could get that fate. I I've used it right away. Offer an enchantment service. Enchantment service requires fifty percent more materials than visiting a proper. Vendor. Oh, whoa. So there is enchanting, and maybe at the blacksmith, and I just missed it. Spell prep for the next two battles. Gain a buff granting one channel every turn. Alchemize. Create a consumable. Okay. So I'll do the enchantment thing. I don't I don't know how that works. And weapon care. Armor care. I'll give him weapon care, and then we'll we'll scooch for two hours. So pick an item. I'll just pick this really bad ring. Oh, wait, what? No, I want to leave it on. Pick pick an item. Did I not click this before and it, like, took me to a different screen? Can I enchant this legendary? So I need soul sparks for this, so I actually can't do it, it looks like. Can I do any item? Pick a craft so there's no craft? Oh, wait, so there might have been other crafts I missed. Uh, I thought it was just down here. There's this as well. Oh, so it's showing me I can't do that as well. But I think I saw one. Yeah, I could do this. Remove all enchantments. Oh, I don't want to do that. Um, cancel. Can I, can I do anything? Just anything at all? Oh, I could do this. Okay, so that's what this magic dust is for. So there's, I probably could have been doing this back in town, and I just wasn't. Um, I like this wand. It gives magic missiles, so I, I'm happy to make it better. Uh, a little bit of cold res, I believe, is what it granted. I'll take that. Disenchant. Enchant up to rare. Nah. 
But if I wanted to, I think I could null stone and then go back in and re-roll the magic property to try to generate one that's maybe a little better than cold res. But I'm fine with this. Uh, it says it'll be forfeited, but I, 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 I'm done here. I, I don't think I'll, I'll lose the upgrade that I already made. And I'll draw a warm meal and cook rations. And I guess I could... I don't want the exhaustion, though. Um... Oh, so this looks like it's a permanent bonus. I have to spend like a lot of time and I get ex three exhaustion. So it's a, a huge detriment for now. But one of my skills is just better forever from that point onward after I recover the exhaustion. Um, so I'll, I might do that. Okay. And then at the end of his uh, training here, I'll heal him up. So I'll pass an hour. This does, Oh, draw a special activity card. I'll go ahead and do that. And small talk. Target hero draws chat. Chat. Hmm. So maybe this is how you uh, develop the like friendship. Oh, I clicked on him. It was I should have clicked on someone else. Gain twenty synergy move. So I'll actually use this on him because he's going to be exhausted afterwards. So I don't think I need to do anything with them for the most part, and it's just going to cost my supplies. So I'll just pass a couple hours, and then I get to increase a card of my choice. So just a magic missile. I want to have as many of these as high rank as possible. And then I will have him meditate. Pass the hour. Have him eat a co Oh, it was a hot meal. But it's no longer a hot meal. Because it's been... Um, it's just had time to cool off. So I'll use one more rations. Have Catherine cook. Pass the hour. And then have him heal up a little bit. I guess I could have just done this for the rest of the heal, and then I'll pass the rest of the time. I don't know if I was super efficient with my um, my time here, but that's okay. I'll return to my adventure, and then I'll go here, pursuing the Rift Lord. <sighs> oh, the waypoint is just up ahead. It should allow for quick travel back to the garrison. You've activated a waypoint. Click on the click on the Use Waypoint button to teleport back to the garrison. Okay, but I I was hoping to chase the Rift Lord. I guess it was just taking me to the waypoint. I could go down south if I wanted, but it's telling me to go to the garrison, so that's where I'll go. And I don't believe that it cost me my, yeah, my portal scroll. This was, I think you can always teleport from the waypoints. So I'll go back here and presumably uh, Captain Roderick or uh, the Enchantress Wine will have something to tell me. Hmm. The burial grounds waypoint has been attuned to our garrisons. This will enable swift travel between the areas from now on. Yes. Okay. As for the Rift Lord's location, the grounds contains various catacombs that he could conceivably be residing in. The ley lines connect in that area, but the maps we have aren't detailed enough. There's some guesswork to be done, I'm afraid. So it seems, traveler, you'll have to investigate each of the three crypts in order to find the area of the Rift Lord's hideout. All right, not bad. Ooh, there's a, this was never here before. This was the broken down shop. He's kind of looking, he's got like a crazed look in his eyes. This might be where I gamble. I had like the gamble coin. I never used it. Also, you're the heroes who defended Silverkeep and helped me get my business back on track. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Marco, just a humble trader. But as you can imagine, the past week has not been a particularly good time to be around here. Anyways, I sell all sorts of fancy things that may be of interest to you adventuring sorts. I'd be, I'd be happy to do business with the right price, of course. Let us begin this highly profitable relationship. Alrighty, so he's... Oh, yeah, so this is presumably where I gamble. Yeah, but is it all... Yeah, oh, I can. I could get a, a random blue rune. I don't want to buy just a rune, though. This is That seems like a really low investment. I want one of these legendaries. Um, oh, come on. He has some other stuff. It's, like, really expensive. Oh, these are all... These are legendaries. You can just buy legendaries. And a tome of respect. So I assume if I if I want to change like how I've leveled up um, his skill grid, the respect will allow me to do that. Um, really expensive, and I'm fine with their current levels. So I'll just look at what these uh, legendaries do. I can't quite afford them. Maybe if I do some selling. Yeah, I have a lot of stuff that I could sell off. I'm just gonna sell everything I'm not using, except for the one legendary, which I'll put on Alphonse um, next time I party with him. And I might switch the party up. We've been playing with these people for a while. They are buffed though, so I'll probably leave them. They're their camp buffs. I don't know if I can like shift click these to sell them or like, yeah, I don't know. I think I have to do the two clicks, so 
hope this isn't incorrect. Oh, and I thought those were nine each, not nine total. I might have kept them. And I might put these on. I don't think I'm going to put these on. One rank to a random buff skill in the in hand on battle. I might I might keep it, I guess. I don't, I don't think I have a belt on all my people. I'll sell that. And how much would the legends sell for? 155. That's pretty good. But I want to I wanna keep it, I think. So I have 600 gold now. Is that going to be enough for anything? No, still not enough, but I'd like to look at it. Grants momentum after dealing damage. Gain critical equal to the number of targets hit multiplied by 5. Wow, so that's pretty good. And it's just like a passive. You don't have to play anything to generate that. You just draw the card and you continue to get that good buff. And you gain a lot of critical and uh, guard when you move. Seems like a good, good uh, weapon. Grants mana charge doesn't seem that good. This seems okay. Maybe maybe mana charge is actually pretty good on like Catherine. I was calling it okay because it doesn't seem that needed on uh, Pierre. But on something like Catherine who normally wouldn't have access to it. Maybe it's really good. Grants flaming grasp. You get critical when you apply burn. And you get... Oh, AP increased by one. is That's really cool. You just permanently get to play more cards every single turn for having this. So like I would love to purchase this for any of my characters. And deal 7 of damage, apply, oh, it's deal 7 fire damage specifically, and then apply um, 10 burn. So yeah, I would, if I had money, I'd purchase this, if I had enough money, that is. Grants Heart of Winter, this makes your chill better. Heart of Winter is a trigger card. When you next apply chill, increase its value by 100, add your might as bonus to chill as well. Okay, so that's cool. Um, I'd rather have this. This is the best one that I've seen, in my opinion. This one seems best. One AP increase seems like a huge, huge, huge bonus. So, but you know what? Can I gamble if I buy? If I buy one more? No, I need two more. I was going to spend all my money on a gamble coin, um, but I need two before I'd be able to get a legendary, so. And if I leave like this, I'm right here. Um, oh, these are the crypts that uh, I have to go through. I was going to teleport up here initially, but it, it appears that it's not not actually any quicker. I could teleport up there just to get to the combat first, though. I might do that just for the sake of uh, doing the combat before getting to the crypts. And this is the old burial grounds? Can I, like, if I click here, do I teleport? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Level 9 encounter, level 9 encounter. Um, and this is, like, what I fought before, so I'm not, I'm not too worried about these. I don't think I'm quite level 9, like my heroes, but, um... Not too worried about fighting the level 9 enemies. Hundred and twelve health is pretty high, but not so high that I'm I'm shaking in my boots or anything. I wish they were next to each other to get the show of force. Um, I don't know that it's worth it though. Um, to shift up one. I think I'd rather generate my strategy points for sustaining strike here. So I'll just play the, the defense cards that I have. I might move, I might move um, Catherine back on her turn, and then she'll be out of the way of their attacks, and they'll swing at him instead. And so I'll, do, I'll go ahead and do what I said I was thinking about, and then these should both target... Oh no, it looks like this is going to target this tile, which will cleave to her still. So I want to get the one block out, and then with my remaining... This is 17 damage, this is 22. I'll just play the higher damage card. And then, I don't think there's any particular, you know, value in that. Just the, the vulnerable. This will do the same thing. I don't think it's super special, but maybe he'll have... Oh, he regenerates every turn. He, 5 HP, for every round. Um, so maybe he'll have a tougher time attacking me because he's there at the back. I'm just going to attack him. Not quite getting the kill, but that's fine. Okay, and uh, Lucius draws a lot of cards. He must have something that says, like, draw an extra card or two. Uh, and then he's going to take 15, and it looks like... I'll try to take care of this skeleton first. So it's just going to be the 15 damage from from this boss skeleton that I really need to worry about. So I will try to generate 15 guard. That's perfect. It's a little more, but I'm happy with it. I'll just move him up and smack him. And then I have the strategy points for it. If I redraw my sustaining strike, I'll, I'll have it. And then let's try to kill 
kill him? Yeah, there we go. So, so it's just Lucius taking damage, and it's just a, a small amount of damage he's taking. So I can have him just smack away for the rest of my, my party. Alright, magic missile, magic missile. Nothing too exciting. Just pretty much the standard Pierre turn. He plays magic missile and doesn't do much else, but it was a lot of damage, so I'm okay with it. And then here, if I if I shift back, I'll go ahead and get um, the ability to do show of force as well as getting my um, trigger cards to, to pop off, so I think it's worth it. Um, and with my remaining turn, I had no attacks, so I will just uh, block twice. Uh, generate a lot of guard here. And then I'm just gonna swing. Choose that, sure. My triggers. Yeah, he's pretty low, and then the chill will almost certainly finish him off after. I was gonna say after Pierre's turn before his, but he goes before Pierre. Uh, so let's see. He's gonna swing. Yeah, he's just gonna swing at Lucius. I'm fine. I can just mend. I'm only one HP down, so I don't want to spend both my um, both my strategy points, and I'll deflect just in case I'm misinterpreting or to generate the strategy points. And then double magic missile takes care of him. That was a pretty simple fight. As I said, I wasn't too worried about it. They were the, the same level as the, the hard fight before, and it wasn't that hard. Okay, fine gear. Just just some stuff. I'm going to go up here and do this one. And then when I, I might uh, head home before I... When I have a level on Pierre. But I'll probably head home before I head into the crypts and swap my party out, just because I've been using these guys for a while. Show of force, just keep the might going. And then I didn't generate, or I didn't draw a single attack. What does this do? Titan deals more damage and has double the HP. Okay. So I guess if they have a purple skull, like red skull just means they're like a little, they'll have a, a small stat buff. Purple skull appears to have this diamond, and the diamond has a, a randomish modifier in it. So, yeah, no big deal. I'll just play my guard, and then intervention will likely trigger when um, these spiders attack. So, I'm hoping Pierre has his barrier in, in between now and then I can be able to play it. And then here, press the attack. Holy force. Penitence. Got rid of one spider, so that's less incoming damage. And then I'll deflect. So, he might, uh, uh, Lucius might take a little damage from the spider's attack, but it shouldn't be that much. Did he take none? Maybe the spider, uh... I thought the spider was doing like 20 damage. I don't know, it's fine. So I'm just gonna push, and then three magic missiles will be a large amount of damage. Yeah, like something like 70 or 80 damage there. Pretty happy with that. And do I have show of force? Nope, no show of force. So I will just rend and sustaining strike, and then just play a couple of... I think reinforce plus uh, guard is a little bit better. I should be able to finish him off. Yeah, quite easy, quite easy. No, no trouble there. And then I have a level on everyone now, so that's nice. Does this have anything? Oh, I like I like attack of opportunity. So um, I might put this amulet on someone, maybe on Catherine, and they'll get a huge number of triggers back and forth. I think because I think you can trigger a, a trigger card off of an already triggered card. Um, how, that's how Lucius gets the, the little three attack combo between focus target and attack of opportunity. So that's good. And then we have my three levels. Hey everyone, Quist Gaming here. If you're enjoying the content, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.